Dun da, dun da. Hey, he's actually making the video. Well, I am. Because I love the Xbox original. And guess what? It's been overshadowed. Now look, shout out to the PlayStation 2. Deserves all the respect and love it gets. But with a success of 155 million units sold, it overshadows the other consoles of the sixth generation. Now look, shout out and love to the GameCube and the Dreamcast. But there's other people, better people for those consoles to stand in front of this camera and give them the love they deserve. Today I'm talking about the Xbox original. I'm going to give it all the love it needs. I'm going to tell you why I love it. There's many reasons I love the Xbox original. And I'm going to give you all the reasons today. But I want to start with the power. When we're talking about 6th generation consoles, the Xbox original is the most powerful. And there are plenty of games that show this power. Games like Soul Calibur 2. I'm not into fighting games, but Soul Calibur 2 is ranked as great by many people who do play fighting games. Not only is the game a great fighter, but I've heard a lot of people say that the Xbox Pro is the best one. Plus, you get to play a spawn. Then you got games like Morrowind. Now now, I know that this is the best console port of Morrowind, because it's the only console port. The other consoles wouldn't even be able to run Morrowind. Now, before we move on, because best believe power is not the only reason, nor the main reason I love this console, I gotta talk about the Splinter Cell games. Now, I'd love to be standing here holding the lovely physical copy of the Splinter Cell games, and you best believe I used to own them. But they got stolen. I was friends with this kid, and I let him borrow a stack of games. The prick moved, took them all with him. The Splinter Cell games are great stealth games. Just a wonderful mix of stealth, gameplay, badassery, and strategy. Lighting plays a factor when it comes to stealth games. Well, there are times where the lighting difference between the Xbox and PS2 versions are a night and day difference. But, like I said, the PAL isn't the reason I love the console. My love for the Xbox original starts with my childhood. See, I'm 20 years old. Most people my age would have grown up with the Xbox 360. When I was a kid, I asked my parents for an Xbox. I didn't realize there was two types of Xboxes. You know, two console generations. Maybe I'm the idiot. Honestly though, I'm glad it turned out the way it did with me getting the original Xbox before the 360. Because I, I got to experience it in more of a traditional way. The games I got with the console were Project Gotham Racing 2. Vroom, vroom. Gun Griffin. Meh. And of course the Legendary. You had to have these with an Xbox. Halo 1 and 2. Oh. But, 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 but. Now... I'm, I'm neglecting, and it wasn't intentional, something awesome happened. Now look, Halo 1 and 2, Project Gotham Racing, awesome. You're already being hit by awesome stuff. The Xbox original is awesome. You're already getting an awesome, awesome train heading your way. But something awesome happened back then, too. Of course, involving the Xbox original. I had a neighbor who gave me... A garbage bag full of games. I'm talking this had to be 25 minimum, up to 40, maybe over 40. That was awesome. A whole garbage bag full of Xbox original games. And that's when I really started to experience the library. The Xbox original, it really was the first console that was completely mine. I mean, all family had other consoles. Me and my sister shared a Game Boy Advance. She also had a GameCube and my family had a Nintendo 64, but I don't remember if we had a video cable for it yet. Besides Flash games, and best believe I played a lot of Flash games as a kid, these were the first games that really were mine. I experienced them alone. I put the hours in, I saved. They were the first ones that really were mine. Now, out of the games I got as a kid, uh, I didn't really care for Gun Griffin, as you heard by my meh earlier. To be fair, I haven't really given it a proper chance, I think. So, it might be really good. Someday, I will stand in front of this wall, and I will give it the love and credit it might deserve. So, you know, don't take my opinion on it as official. Maybe try it. It might be good. 
Project Gotham Racing 2, it's a good game. Good racing game. I don't hold, like, a deep-seated, glowing-from-the-heavens love for it. It's been a while since I played it. I liked it. It's a good game. But, and I'm going to set these on the ground, because the, the power in my left hand is too powerful. Halo 1 and 2. Take a good look at them. I, these are the games I fell in love with. I love Halo. Now look. I don't want to drag this video down too much. I don't like to share my past or personal stuff. And I love my family very much. But, yeah, I'm going to be honest. In my childhood, it wasn't the best. The cops were called a lot. A lot, a lot of stuff went down. On top of that, you know, my social life with school and stuff wasn't that great. But, I had to escape. Halo 1 and 2 and the Xbox original overall, that garbage bag full of games, it gave me an escape from reality I really needed. And no matter what drama or bullshit was going on in my life, I could come home, I could turn on that black box, I could be a space marine with his sassy AI Katana, and I could just drift away, even to this day I can still boot up certain games and just keep playing them, drift away when reality gets to be too much. Oh, and that's the backstory of how this long-haired, big-bearded motherfucker can stand in front of this wall of Xbox and tell you why he loves it. I've given you the context and I've already told you some of the reasons why the console's great, I, the power of it, but the whole of this video, what I really want to get across is the answer to why. Why is the Xbox original great? Okay? Why do I still rep and play it? Well, the most important thing to a console is the games, of course. See, I have a video idea I'm making, plus curiosity, I have a vague idea of what my top 10 video games of all time are. And as I've been creating this list, I realized something. Now, the list isn't official. I don't know exactly. Like, part of the problem with the list is a side tangent. I love Halo so much, I don't want the list to be clogged up with Halo games. I don't know if I'll include one or none. But when I was making this list... Well, actually, I want to go back. I won't include none now. Of course there's going to be one. Anyway, tangent is over. So as I was making the top 10, I realized... About half of the games on the top 10 list were well, games on the Xbox original. I mean, a console's gotta be great if five, like five, like roughly half of your top 10 games are on this console. It's gotta be great. You know what? I'm gonna give you these five games. I'm gonna share it with you. A gift from Uncle Hay from himself. Starting with Armed and Dangerous. Definitely a hidden gem. Great gameplay and great comedy. I don't need to stand here and explain why Armed and Dangerous is great. Not because it doesn't deserve it, but I already made a whole goddamn video on this game. Now, the next game on the list might surprise you. I don't know if there's any pro gamers out there watching. Honestly, probably normal people would be surprised by this. What is the game? It's Lynx 2004! Yeah, I know. It's a sports game. And a golf game. But you know what else it is? It's great. Now look, in all honesty, I'm not recommending Lynx 2004 unless a golf game is something you're looking for. In that case, it might be the best golf game ever. But obviously most people aren't going to be interested in it. And that's fine, of course. Lynx 2004 is a childhood game of mine. I have a lot of memories of it. I put a lot of time into Lynx 2004. It's not just like regular gaming memories that make me love Lynx 2004. It's one of the few games that me and my father played a lot. I have a lot of memories with him. It's one of the few games that I've seen, especially more modern games, I saw that my father really got invested in. I remember, you know, we're walking down a hill on the way to a family get-together, and he was all excited because earlier that day he had hit platinum. He, he was more ahead in the quote-unquote campaign of the game than I was. He was genuinely excited about ranking up. Now, all the love, respect, and cheers to Lynx 2004, but I'm amped. You want to know why I'm amped? Because this next game gets you amped. 
Burnout Free Takedown! Burnout Free Takedown is my favorite racing game of all time, and a game that really does ace everything. First of all, the soundtrack is fucking awesome, and it fits the game perfectly. Now, if you own this game, and the whole soundtrack is great, there's one song that you remember. We are the lazy generation, no more standing out in line. Now look at those graphics. They look great. But... You know what else is still great in 2020? Playing this game, because the gameplay is awesome. The racing mode, the road rage mode, and the crash mode are top notch. This is how you do vehicular combat. Now, now. The next two games I'm gonna put together. You might know what they are already. I've already praised them. <sighs> to address the elephant in the room, I'm of course gonna praise and love. Halo 1 and 2 again. Honestly, it's overwhelming to know how much to say about Halo 1 and 2. There's hours of videos I have yet to make on Halo 1 and 2, so limiting myself is tricky, but I'm gonna try. I love the story, and as I said earlier, the Halo games made me appreciate storytelling. I spent hours at the library reading and watching videos about Halo. If you don't mind, I'm gonna spend about the next 20 minutes or so to really break down why I love the story. Too much time, too much time, hey from, uh, stop talking about the storytelling, story's great. You gotta talk about gameplay. All right, fine. For me, the Halo gameplay blends arcadey gameplay with variety and complexity. The way the different enemies, weapons, and vehicles play into the sandbox is brilliant. Now, while I do love Halo 1 and 2, I'm gonna admit something. Maybe a bit controversial. I'm just happy to finally know what my number one is in something. Halo Combat Evolved. Halo Combat Evolved is my favorite game of all time. One thing I've been enjoying is collecting for the Xbox original. And something I've done with collecting for that, something I do in a lot of mediums, something I just naturally gravitate to, which is looking into the more obscure hidden gems of any medium. And I found some interesting obscure games for the Xbox original. I have four of them I want to uh, show you today, starting with Red Ninja, End of Honor. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never seen this game brought up or discussed before. I only found out about it from a lot of eBay browsing. The game isn't amazing and has a lot of clunkiness, but it's still interesting and worth trying. Then you got a game that I'm certain even less people know about called Mojo. What's an explanation point? I don't even remember how I found out about Mojo. Maybe I saw it in a lot on eBay or something. Mojo is a puzzle game that I had fun with. Puzzle games aren't a genre I tend to play, so this game can get challenging for me. But if puzzle games are your shit, then you gotta get Mojo. When I bought this game, I didn't see many listings on eBay, which makes me wonder how rare it is. Nonetheless, at least at the moment, it's not expensive. Now, now, now. We're gonna get a bit weirder. This game is gonna surprise you what we have here is a fitness game that's right a fitness game for the xbox original i was looking at this game on ebay for a while but my curiosity finally led me to buy this game the game was what i was kind of expecting it to be like it's basically like one of those workout videos that were common back in the day where you follow what the instructor does on the screen one thing that i found weird and is a case of a video game thing getting in the way, is that not everything is unlocked from the start. I feel like if someone is gonna use this to actually work out, then they should have all the options available at the beginning, so they can really personalize what they need. Now look, it's easy to laugh and mock a fitness game for the Xbox original, and it is weird. I'm not gonna deny that. But at the end of the day, if this game helps some people, you know, get healthier, then that's good. Now, to get a bit weirder, the Xbox original got a certain game and a certain type of genre that most people associate with the Nintendo Entertainment System, but we were lucky enough to get it on the Xbox. That's right. The Xbox original got its very own Bible game. Yeah, I was surprised too. A Bible game. I mean, what, what's the gameplay going to be like? That's the question that really lingered in my mind. 
Well, sadly, it's not some hidden, really terrible game. It's just a weird trivia game that I suck at because I don't know tons of details about the Bible. Although, funny enough, I did get my uh, first question right, purely out of luck. But, I do know one thing. Back in the early 2000s, there was probably some kid who was probably homeschooled and had to play this shit. To that kid, I feel sorry. But luckily now, in 2020, we don't have to play this shitty game. Now, 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 you folks didn't think I would end this video without mentioning a certain company. Now, I'm wondering what that company could be. Well, if you're an Xbox original enthusiast, then you might know. That company, of course, is... SEGA! That is right, folks. I am talking about Sega. You know why I'm talking about Sega? Because Sega, when it comes to the original Xbox, it is ingrained in its soul. It rides through the veins of its very essence. It rides waves of lava while maintaining the beauty of the ocean. The might of the greatest mountain. Microsoft's relationship with Sega started when Microsoft was actually considering buying Sega before the Dreamcast. The relationship started to actually materialize with Windows CE running on the Sega Dreamcast. Sadly, the Dreamcast, while great, ended up failing and dying, which really is sad. But, the Dreamcast lived on through the Xbox original. It is alleged that Sega wanted the Xbox to actually be able to run Dreamcast games. And sadly, while this didn't happen, Sega did sign a deal to have 11 new Sega games be exclusive to the original Xbox. Some Sega game series would actually see an entry on the original Xbox, as well as some games originally being made for the Dreamcast. While I don't have all of them, I do have some of the Sega games for the original Xbox. Starting with Gun Valkyrie. This game is fun, beautiful looking graphics wise, plus bonus points. It's got a hot chick on the cover. What more could you want? Now look, I could see some people not liking the game, the controls. The controls can be finicky, annoying. So go into it expecting the controls to be a bit wacky. Then we got Shenmue 2. If you're a Shenmue fan, then you gotta play the second one of course. Now, there is technically a Dreamcast version of Shenmue 2, but not for North America. And I don't know about the mild differences, but this version seems pretty good. Gee, maybe I should be like Ryo, the main character in Shenmue. But instead of going on a years long journey to solve something that matters, I should track down the bastard that stole those fucking games from me. Now look, I ain't Christian and this game ain't exclusive, but it's fun. Next we got Panzer Dragoon Ulta. A little pricey, nothing compared to the... Sega Saturn and Panzer Dragoon games, those are really expensive. Overall, great rail shooter, fun game. One of my luckiest finds ever at Goodwill. This game was sitting on the shelf at like 3 p.m. Long after the damn scalpers came and, you know, they'd pick through all the shelves by then. How did I find this? I don't know. I'm glad I did. Best $2.99 I've spent. Now... Out of all the Sega games I own personally, this is the last one, but like I said before, I don't own them all. I'm talking about Jet Set Radio Future and Sega GT 2002. Double pack. You can find them separately, of course, but you often find the double pack. I think the double pack might be a lot more common. Uh, Sega GT 2002. Overall, just a great arcade racer. Very fun, I recommend it. Jet Set Radio Future. One of my favorite soundtracks in any video game. Plus, very unique game. Great follow-up to the Dreamcast version. Highly recommend. This video was a journey in a way, but not the end, nor the beginning. I know the past, I don't know the future, but I can tell you my plans for the middle. I'm launching a series on the original Xbox. I'm excited for it, but I do want to make something clear. I aim for quality, but will never reach perfection. But I know that I can bring something unique, whether it's part of my new series on the original Xbox, or any other of my videos. If you made it to the end, I appreciate it.